Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. We're gonna get the features. Features, you have something to say before we get into this? Because I have some, I, I have some combat for some of the angry man's points as well. But I'm just being patient. I, I, I kind of enjoyed watching that too much. I needed to mediate. But features, get in here. Pause. Yeah. Um. Uh, happy that angry man came and and joined us. It's kind of brave uh, for him. What he has mentioned about the child support and uh, feminism and things of this nature. There's actually evidence to back this up. Uh, since the women's suffrage movement, which actually was grounded in racism to begin with. This there has been this push since World War II to have women enter into workspaces. So I, I can see where he's coming from that. From for that. taxing reasons. Yeah, for taxing reasons, right? All this. However, when we're talking, the, the reason why we're here is because LTT had asked the question, is Pearl on the chopping block? So I want to bring it back there because Angry Man is here as well. And Angry Man, I wanted to ask you directly about your position on Pearl because you did take a very strong stance in support of Pearl after she invited Nick Fuentes on her channel, right? Just like Fresh and Fit invited Nick Fuentes on their channel, knowing full and well that Nick Fuentes is a white supremacist. And Pearl is not just white, she is culturally white. Culturally white okay so it's not just a somebody who is ignorant of racism or things of this nature rather she is pushing the idea that slavery is in in her own words this comes directly from the confederate sisters of america's diatribe when they when they try to defend their role in slavery she had nick fuentes basically assault her black staff while in interview and you defended her. That's so, it. yeah, that's the, that's the the question. What is your position? Okay, my position was, and I did a show about it. I don't know if you saw the show, but I said basically that what Pearl said, one, a lot of what she said was taken out of context. And I played it over and over again for everybody to see. What she said was the guy that made the the movie Roots, I forget his name or whatever. He Alex said, Haley. He said that he his embellished. Name is Alex Haley. Yeah, Alex Haley. Thomas Sowell. He said that he, uh, he said Thomas Sowell. He said that he, he embellished roots, which was what she said. Now, everybody was saying she was saying that slavery was embellished. Now, if that was the statement she made, I would not agree with that. But what she said was that roots was embellished. And so we got into this whole back and forth and, you know, Everybody, you know, says what they say. I done been called a coon eating butter biscuits, all of that goofy shit, right? But no, like my position was that wasn't what she said. Now, does that mean not? Actually, that, that, that is that is actually what she said, right? I know which video you're talking about. I've watched it myself. She started off by saying that I don't want to get in trouble by saying this, but some of the story of line of slavery sounds embellished. And then she continued to mention Alex Haley and Roots, and she said, like you said, I don't remember his name. Right. And then yeah. she said the, the author of Roots said that she wanted he wanted his people to write a, a myth for his people to live by. The argument was the Holocaust was not special and all countries have done that. Yeah. And exactly. so you're saying, why is the Holocaust special? Yeah, basically. Oh. Okay, what do you mean, basically? Well, yeah, I mean, because, of but, course, you know, we're getting into the details of it. But, yeah, that's that's the that's the gist. Yeah. I mean, it, but you kind of deny it happened. I deny you, some of the you, parts of you it. You deny parts of it don't seem realistic to you. You right. think they're embellished upon. I think they're embellished, yeah. The same way. This sounds... Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Ah, they're going to be gonna in get trouble. This sounds, this sounds similar to the slavery stuff, too. Because that's that's literally... they they The founder of... Or the guy who made Root said, I wanted a myth for my people to live by. So they often... But that's what they do is they embellish... And I'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible. It was. Right. But they want to make it, like, more horrible so that they can control people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A few moments later. Now, this was the part that was probably the dumbest part of the whole interview. This was the, the stupidest, the dumbest, dumbest, dumbest. Oh, this was stupid. 
Um, so I said that slavery was embellished in the interview. Um, now that not only is that comment insensitive, it's not accurate. There were things in slavery that were worse than what was shown on TV. Um, what I was referring to, I like don't even want to tell you guys what I was trying to say because it wasn't what came out and it doesn't even matter. That was Alex Haley speaking about the authoring of his book, Roots, correct? Well, the, the statement that I made on my show when it happened is I said that first part was incorrect, but the part about Alex Haley was correct. And I said she shouldn't have said it if anybody watched the show. She shouldn't have said I, it. I remember something else being said, too. What else did I say? I just remember you saying that movies are actually made to look worse than reality because that's just the way it is. And I was thinking yeah, that. Yeah, that was pro statement too, per roots. You can't yeah, make movies worse than reality because there's no way to equate movie simulation to what reality is. Like, no matter how many fake lashings you give somebody, nothing compares to the actual lashings you saw from photos where people were imprinted from their backs that you look like it was out of something from medieval times. So. Things like that just seem kind of outlandish. I remember that take there, um, but somebody else go ahead and go. Well, hold on, I, I want to say this though. So I, I get what you're saying, because you kept saying you played it back. So A Street, if you on the same conversation, like, okay, I have a response to that. So, and it was clearly Pearl's word. So why didn't she have the same response you gave to, to Ethan on A Street, A Street podcast? Because he literally played her words back to her and she felt a little bit like, oh, I'm, I'm a gotcha moment. I'm stuck. So let me now let's kind of like escape from the podcast. So do you agree with that premise that slavery was embellished? There are parts that are um, under embellished and there are parts that are over embellished. I think it just depends That's what we're talking so about. so interesting. I've got to know what was over embellished about slavery. I mean, I was talking about a book that I read. Thomas Sowell talks about how the guy that made Roots talked about how it was a myth for his people to live by. You know, myth doesn't necessarily mean it's a lie, right? I mean, that doesn't mean the way it's depicted in the movie was how it actually happened. Thomas so. Sowell compared Barack Obama to Adolf Do you like that analogy? <laughs> but he wrote like a hundred books. You also said George Washington was viewed by, from his slaves like a father. That was from a Thomas Sowell book. So he's your guy, Thomas Sowell's the man. Thomas Sowell wrote a column about supporting segregation in public schools. <laughs> like, you want me to talk about every single one of this man's opinions? 47 of George Washington's slaves tried to escape. Would you try to escape if you okay, loved well, your maybe, master? Maybe that, maybe that one was wrong. I, I was quoting a book. So, so do you agree like, with this, his statement, though? Do I think overall it was embellished? Some parts, sure. There it is. Which part? Some parts. No, please tell me which part. I think, tell me. I think that certain <laughs> slaves had good relationships with their owners. Not all, maybe not most, but I think some did. Do you guys Wait. act just like I've been preached? Like, there's <sighs> okay. been a whole diver. Uh, thank you. I really I, okay, I really appreciate you having me on, um, but I'm, I'm going to go. Thank you. George. Thank you. Well, yeah, she shouldn't have said it in the first place. Like, I already acknowledged that. And she shouldn't have said that in the first place. Like, sitting up there as a white woman making a statement like that is even if even if you said it, it doesn't matter how you say it. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come off bad. It's going to be bad optics either way. All right, let but me pause real quick. Hold, hold on, let me pause real quick. We got a super chat from Brother Jumbie. Shout out to Brother Jumbie. Oh, hold up, let me pull this up. One second, y'all. This went by. I'm getting wrong. There we go. So Brother Jumbie said, that's a fucking lie. Alex Haley said, I gave my people a for folklore or mythos, not a work of fiction. Jesus, read a book, peanut butter. So that's what Brother <laughs> Jumbie said. And this is, for me, I have done breakdown after breakdown after breakdown. I've watched Pearl get on every platform possible, putting her foot in her mouth. I've seen Pearl make the most racist statements. If we're going to sit here in good faith and actually say that Pearl is not a racist and, and harken back to one statement and debate that. It's like, we're, we're not being, we're not, we're not keeping it a stack right now. We, we, Pearl hung herself already. She already did the whole anti-Semitic thing on top of the whole black racism. It's, it's already fully established now. There is nothing to debate here. So when we're going through the minutia of, oh, it was framed this way and it was X, Y, and Z, it's like, what are we doing here? We're months past establishing that Pearl is racist. Now, Angry Man, we know you caped for her. So we, we should, we should be looking at why did you cape for her knowing that she's racist instead of trying to debate the points of saying, oh, she's maybe not racist in X, Y, and Z. Why did you cape for her? Was it, a, was it financial? Was it she has a million subs, you have 400,000 or whatever you have. A Anton has 200,000. Y'all are doing the business move type shit. Like, what was that about? No, when I, when I did the show, 
that was genuinely my thoughts. I didn't get a benefit from that. I haven't been on Pearl's show. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get a benefit from that. That was just me saying what I thought. You feel what I'm saying? Now, if people disagree with it, cool. We can have the conversation. We can debate about it. As far as other statements that Pearl has made, I don't really watch Pearl like that. You feel what I'm saying? I saw that statement because everybody was showing it and everybody so was commenting. On it and I'm it, like, now, now, part, now that part was content strategy because like everybody talking about it, I'm going to talk about the shit too. But my thoughts on it were genuine. But your thoughts Brother, on it are you genuine. Me? Everybody, all, all black folks are enraged thinking that she's done some racist, they're knowing that she's done some racist shit because it persists. And you don't watch Pearl like that. So to take in her content, you want to speak about it because everybody's speaking about it. There's no, there's no harm in that. But you take the defense of Pearl going against your people, and it's just, oh, you thought that she, she, like, I, I don't really understand the explanation here. And then months in later, that, after it's pretty much solidified that she's racist, you're still taking the that, same. In that particular instance, but if you showed me a clip right now where she said something that I felt was racist, I'm gonna be like. Yeah, that's some racist bullshit. So what do you feel is racist? So slavery being embellished is not racist? It is, but the the comment about Roots, I didn't think that was racist. Nobody was complaining about the comment about Roots. As but a matter of fact, was, as a matter of fact, was, if, you, that, if you run through a black YouTube, I can't recall but, a single uh, person who mentioned but, uh, it. Oh, you know what how do you, Pearl how said you, about that Roots were talking about slavery being embellished. They were talking you, about Nick Fuentes being on the channel in front of a bunch of black people and her saying that these are my Africans. That's what they were talking about. Yeah, and and that, that, Brother that, Angry Man, I would like to hear from you as well, because you did, because I did watch a good portion of, of your response, and you did mention in your response, if you recall, that in your defense of Pearl, right, and your basically defense of yourself, I'm, I'm assuming, right? You said that you were done with black women. Yeah, I did say that. I did so, Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. What? I did say that. Well, hold right. on. So here's my, here's my thing, bro. If you've ever watched my show, right? I may take a position that a lot of people don't agree with and I have my reasons for it, right? But it's my it's my thought, it's my original thought, it's me being genuine, right? So what'll happen is I'll have a bunch of people come into the chat room and start fucking with me about it. At mm -hmm. that point, I'ma start talking shit and there's no telling what the fuck I'ma say. Mm -hmm. But I probably did say that shit. Yeah, you did, yeah, you did. But the point is, is that you came to the defense of a white woman and then threw your own woman under the bus. That's, that's, that's the optics behind it. I didn't throw my own woman under the bus. But wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. How, wait, first of all, you're not going to speed past that. Like, you didn't just say what you just said. You said I'm done with black women. Like, how much, how is that throwing them, that not throwing them under the bus? I mean, he said, threw it to the river. He didn't throw yeah. them under the bus. Okay, okay. Uh, my apologies. Right? Yeah, it's a difference. Thank you, Mike. It's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. Brother Grayfield. You, you, had, you had wanted to jump in there. Oh, shit, uh, Grayfield. What's going on with you, bro? What's going on, man? Yeah, you already know uh, the whole issue I have. Reason why, the whole reason why I came up is because I, I saw the show that OT did yesterday. I think you did it yesterday with Anton, lead attorney or whatever. That was earlier yeah. today. Earlier today? Okay. Yeah. So I saw that show, and I wanted to come up here to address what you had said about Fresh. The only reason why I felt bad for Fresh is because I feel like Fresh kind of gets drug along with Myron's antics and shit. Oh, and yeah, you said really... you felt sorry for Fresh, and I'm like, yo, yeah, you're feeling yeah, sorry for a man. follower, and that's not that's holding him unaccountable. As a grown-ass yeah. man, he should know yeah. not to follow. So, He's supposed to be an alpha man. Well, here's my thing. I can feel bad for any content creator that gets demonetized. That's just my position. Across Except for black women, right? Damn! Damn! No, black women, too. black women too. I don't like. I don't like nobody. I don't like to see nobody's money messed with. You feel what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean I agree with all of the shit that Fresh and Fit does. You feel what I'm saying? The the problem that I I don't I have a problem with the red pill space and the manosphere space specifically because it's always like. It's always sympathy, empathy for the man, and instead of pointing, instead of being like, okay, you should be accountable for this, and it's all accountability and sternness for women, and it's none of that for the men, and I don't, I think that goes against the man building that y'all are trying to do. I think it makes, it creates well, very weak men, and, and these well, men are always reliant a, on, sorry? Well, that's a, that, that is an issue, because one of the reasons why, look, when it comes to the manosphere space, regardless of how long I've been in that space. I'm not the most liked guy in that space. And the reason why is because I do hold the men accountable for the shit that they do. 
I do talk about what men should do and what, you know, and what they shouldn't do and things of that nature. You feel what I'm saying? Anybody that's ever watched me has seen me do it. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm not just 24-7 on the win. No hate, no hate at all, but I, I don't watch your content like that to know it. All I know is that you were defending Pearl and everybody that was defending Pearl got... They got thrown in the same the same bin no of the, the coon bin. So I'm I'm looking at y'all and I'm criticizing folks that are in that same bin defending Pearl. I don't watch your content that much to, to to know the actual content. But we also have allegations that were made on this very show about you purchasing subscribers. Now I didn't want to I didn't want to go along with that while I was speaking to one of the callers that said you purchased subscribers because I had no evidence. But now that we have you on the panel. What do you think of, or did you purchase any subscribers? No, I did not. Brother Angry Man, you are one of the originals in the black man. And in the black man, there's much talk of <laughs> accountability and things of this nature. And your defense of Pro, not, not just you, but Brother Obsidian, the way that he defended Pro was, I'm sorry, was outrageous. <laughs> outrageous, right? That was about right. Yeah. And you, that defense at the time, it caused irreparable damage yeah, to, to, the, to the black man, it right? Because as I was mentioning before, before you hopped on, I was mentioning to the brothers that Red Pill is, is vast. It's not like a mono, monolithic type of platform, right? You have many different areas of Red Pill. The reason why we know about Fresh and Fit because they're the most visible, right? Yeah. I only found out about Fresh and Fit because I was following Kevin Samuels and he went on Fresh and Fit, mm -hmm. right? But I haven't followed him since. And the next time I watched him, it was O'Shea Duke Jackson. Okay. <laughs> who was talking about, and now YouTube is this massive soap opera now because O'Shea Duke that Jackson is talking about Fresh and Fit versus App and Preach. And he initially sided with, if you guys can remember, he initially sided with who? Fresh and Fit. Um, he initially sided with Fresh Fit over App and, and Preach. And it wasn't even until he talked to Kevin Samuels about their antics and he called them directly that he switched to App and Preach. Again, it's a whole soap opera. But the, yeah. the point is, it shows you the, the wide range that Red Bull has. On one hand, you have O'Shea. On the other hand, you have Kevin Samuels. On the other hand, you have a fresh and fit, right? All of them, are, they're they're considered in that red pill space, but they're not on the same type of as you as the brother mentioned the bucket list. You have always been considered one of the OGs in the black manosphere. That defense, that defense was absolutely abhorrent. It was abhorrent because now you have other brothers who are very professional in the black manosphere who have good reputations and they're getting lumped into that too, like. The, the good doctor, uh, Dr. Hassan T. Johnson. Dr. You know? T. Johnson, yeah. Yeah, T. T. Hassan Johnson. Very good brother. Very knowledgeable. And he, you discredit an entire, you know, beneficial movement for men from defending de degenerates. You know what the issue is? Like, what really annoys me about the space? What annoys me about the space is the only things that ever get highlighted are things like that. Nobody. Well, this is YouTube. Like nobody, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that will get highlighted, of course, as YouTube. Exactly, but you know, <laughs> everybody was everybody was silent when I was saying that Pearl shouldn't be speaking for us. The only person, in fact, the only person that actually echoed that sentiment directly to her was Coach Greg Adams, right? I didn't echo it directly to her because I didn't I didn't have access to her, but I did shows where I basically said she shouldn't be speaking for black men, point blank, period. But nobody brings that up. You feel what I'm saying? They just bring up the instance of me saying something about that comment about fucking roots and shit. You feel what well, I'm saying? Well, the next, next time you I, do one of your, your very creative shorts, bring that one. I got a question. So when you did the reaction to um, Pearl and Nick, so do you think Pearl brings any value speaking forth and just any value period to the to black men? Not, no, because black men, the, the problem with the problem with us is we need to be speaking for ourselves. You feel what I'm saying? Because the only person that can actually speak for black men and directly to black men's issues are going to be other black men. So I don't think that women, particularly white women, shouldn't be speaking for black men. You feel what I'm saying? So the only the only value, the only value that we would have in this space is black men speaking for black men's topics. But the problem is you have so many black men at odds with each other that that ends up being the problem.
So we, we our voices don't get heard as well as they should get heard because it gets drowned out with the drama and the soap operas. I agree. So, I, have, I have a question for the angry man. Are you for... I, I I don't know the the direction of your platform. Are you for the, the the betterment of black families, or are you for the betterment of black men? I'm for the betterment of black people as a whole, if it's possible. But I spend a lot of time. I'm not even gonna lie to you. I spend a lot of time talking about the dysfunction because I get sick of seeing it. You feel what I'm saying? I get tired of seeing it. But whenever I talk about it, it's it's always viewed as me just wanting to beat up on black people instead of me trying to point out where we need to change. The thing is, when, when folks well, get on code, hold well, on, let me point. When certain issues come up or come arise and become popular trending issues and folks get on code, we're more likely to take certain folks seriously when they have criticisms for, for the culture or for the community. If, you, if you're going to focus on the negative things and be like, this needs to improve, when times of these, when times like Pearl getting racist on the community and saying disparaging things to black men, like "oh, we were comfortable being that, slaves that and we love the slave part. masters," as, as somebody that speaks for a man, for a, men, wait, yeah. wait, back up, back up, wait, 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 wait. say that again. Which, the the part what she said, what she said that black men were comfortable with what? No, she was saying that black men loved and grew to love their slave masters as if they were like their father figures type shit. Black men. Oh. You also said George Washington was viewed by, from his slaves like a father. I guess that's part of what the the, mm -hmm. the part of the what the myth I guess is that not all slave owners were evil. Some were father figures like George Washington. Did you say that? <laughs> I don't remember. I think, remember. like, if someone's a great and powerful man in history to the point, like, they're talking about him hundreds of years later, he didn't have any kids. But did, like, he, he, did he own slaves? What? Did he own slaves? <laughs> George Washington. Yeah, he did. Yeah, no romance to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, he actually, it's actually interesting. He, um, he had a different, like, he inherited his slaves. And it wasn't as simple as he could have just like let them go because um, the debt that's incurred on them, like you can't just release them. And so he, his slaves actually like he had a really good relationship with them and they considered him like a dad. Hell no! When the fuck did she say George that? Washington she, was a father figure. She said, yeah, that. she said that, and somebody that advocates that. for men, she was comfortable putting black men underneath comfortably as slaves underneath the white man. And yo, know, she's that's what I'm saying. She's clearly outlined it herself as as a racist. There's no debate at this point. I've done many breakdowns on my channel about this. So the problem is some of these breakdowns too long. You probably haven't seen some of the clips and some of the things she said, but it's egregious. That's what I'm saying. So moments like this. When things like this happen, when you get on code and you like, oh, Pearl, get the fuck out of here. We're not handling, we're not, we're not dealing with that. You're, you're disrespecting the community. And then you have negative things to say about some of the things that persist in the community. Some of the criticisms that you have that you want to fix it. People are more inclined to be like, you know what? I'm going to listen to that. But when you are caping for Pearl, not knowing anything about her content and not knowing to the extent of the racist remarks that were made, it makes you look funny in the light. And that's why you got thrown into the coon bin with Anton and the rest of those folks. And I barely know your content, but those type of moments stand out. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, bro, like, I done been called a coon for numerous things, and I hear what you're saying. I didn't know she said that shit. If I'm being honest, I ain't know she said that wild shit. Well, we can keep it on just a, yeah, we can just keep it on the Nick Fuentes because yeah. Nathan Daly himself was like, he reviewed the whole thing publicly spoke about it and was like, hey, I don't find her based on that Nick Fuentes interview that she's a racist. I was like, huh? And then when I came on, because he's, he's pretty much like, he's like, he's down for the, he's like, a, anybody want to debate him, he's down for, right? Mm -hmm. I challenged him on that. And I'm like, yo, I'm I'm a nobody guy. It's been three months. This guy been literally ducking me. I got his personal contact, IG number. I'm like, yo, you treat me like the ex-girlfriend. What's mm -hmm. good? I Now I had to go the YouTube route, a whole community tab, professional letter, like, yo, we we agreed on debate on this topic that you agreed that he is she does not she's not a racist i say she is based on his, this interview that she did what's up let's have this conversation crickets mm. which dude was that what's his name uh, the real nathan daly and i'm saying that name proudly oh, that's nathan that daly. police officer dude right yeah that's the police officer oh, that's, the guy that, that's the guy oh, that's oh, all right yo everybody okay. hold your thoughts real quick let me read the super chat so shout out to moxie with the five dollar super chat 
She says, angry man, Pearl saying slavery was embellished was deplorable. If you don't see that, you're in denial. Come on, bro. Stop tans. That's where the argument keeps going. And I keep saying over and over, I'm talking about the roots comment. It's the same no. shit when I did the show. Bro. Everybody was in the chat room with the shit about, oh, it's slavery. I'm talking about the roots comment. Bro, brother, angry man, with all due respect, that was that was a softball of the century. I would have did... Uh, a video on Pearl. Hey, way, way back last year, before Ooh. any of this stuff. You too? Right? Yes. Before she was even popping. What did like they that. say about you, Fees, when you did it? What did they say about you? <laughs> they, they, she didn't say nothing about me, as well, but what I said about her. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because she was, she was, at that time, she was kind of like copying the Kevin Samuels, what you would call the playbook, whatever, his talking yeah. points and everything like that. And you know, black men, if it, if it ain't, if it ain't black, they're just gonna just kind of gravitate towards it. And that's exactly what happened, right? But she says some crazy things, right? With some really outlandish racist things back then. And I yeah. lost her for, for it, right? But uh, now because this thing, she invited Nick for winters. This, this is like a no brainer. Any self-respecting a black person can see that this is a no brainer. So, so the, only thing, the, on, the only thing that this situation did was separate the house Negroes from the field Negroes. That's it. So let me so let me ask you this question in and, and this is an honest question. Go ahead. So if if most of the people that actually consume her content on a regular basis see her constantly making these comments, why have so many people supported her platform? Because we're in cells. Look at her, look at the community. Your community <laughs> reflects exactly who you are. Her community is a bunch of people who don't have relationships, who <laughs> like the fact that she's giving them these poor ass prescriptions and she wouldn't date any of them. Nobody would date Pearl if it wasn't for the shit that she was saying. Let's keep it a thousand fucking percent. Y'all are lying if you say you are. I, I, I mean, Angela has a has a hard point there. It does have a part point. I mean, there there are there's an elf who watch people such as yourself, brother Angry Men, who watch people like Minister Jab, who watch people like Kevin Samuels and. Kevin Samuels, he, he was like in a league of his own, obviously, but he was trying to keep the black family together. Minister, Mr. Jack, we know what he's about, right? But they try they try to repeat your talking points because they just generally cannot get women. They generally can't, right? So and and to express Whoa. their anger, like their anger their anger as you as you do, right? What they do is they go on their social media platforms and just repeat what you say as women and just espouse anger. That that's that's the the consequence of the type of content that she that you guys release. Well here's the thing here's the thing about my audience. My audience is a little bit different mm -hmm. because a lot of the a lot of the guys that come to my audience are actually married guys, actually guys in relationships because I do promote relationships. And a lot of the guys that have come into my chat room saying, fuck marriage, marriage is dead, all of that goofy shit, they end up getting booted out of my audience. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not, I'm not a person that thinks that men should le live some sort of monk lifestyle where they don't have a relationship with a woman. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. And I, and I respect that. However, when you were asking about the type of folks that watch just burly things, mm -hmm. you gotta remember she left the States as well to go to the UK. Yeah. And of course, in the UK, the black folk there are not really culturally savvy to what's going on in the West Coast. They're from the UK. They don't really understand, you know, a lot of the 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 finer tuned points about slavery and things of this nature because they're on the other side of the pond. Right. Mm -hmm. So they can't understand. They're culturally different. Right. And with just with just pearly things now, she says, even though she doesn't, I'm positive she does. She says she claims that she reads Thomas Soul. Right. That's the mm -hmm. claim. We know very well she probably couldn't even read her name, okay? But she <laughs> she don't she don't read no Thomas Sowell. It's a, no way, okay? No way. But what she does do is that she will gather the top the most recent Thomas Sowell clips because you're, you're I think you're about my age or maybe a little bit older, Angry Man. Right? Mm -hmm. So we know we know Thomas Sowell from way back in the day, way back yeah. in the late eighties and early nineties and or whatnot. And we he was never popular for talking about slavery. No, he was always popular for talking about welfare, you know, getting education and mm -hmm. how racism is not really the reason why black black folk are behind. Right. That's what, you know, yeah. And, yeah, and many of us. And he gets painted and you, you got to agree with this, brother. He gets painted with the coon label as well. He is coonish. Yeah, make no mistake. He, but he make no mistake about it. He is coonish. But he, at the same time, it's it's from intelligence to listen to the people that you disagree with. That's mm -hmm. the intelligent thing to do. 
You have yeah. to listen to people you disagree with because they might be disagreeing with you for a legitimate point. So he has some legitimate points. None of his points that are legitimate are related to slavery. Not a single one. Not one of his peers agrees with him and has come out in support of him. Not a single historian, black historian, anything, a lawmaker, not one, has said, yes, Thomas Sowell is speaking the truth. So what she has done is she's listened to some Thomas Sowell video and tried to repeat what Thomas Sowell is saying, trying to sound articulate. Mm -hmm. You get it? Right? And now you have these alleged other folks in the black ministry, such as Anton Daly, whoever, you know, from the, from the, you know, they're taking this ideological stance, this right wing ideological stance, right? And they've taken the, the conservative sisterhood talking points, right? And brought them forth to black folk like it's the truth. Oh, slavery was embellished. Oh, don't you know that the white people were enslaved too? All this stuff that has nothing to do with the devilish European transatlantic slave trade, nothing at all. And they try to mesh that and mash that up into one thing. And here comes j just pearly things, trying to repeat these these talking points. And again, she just sounds ridiculous because she's very good as a recorder, but not a responder. Okay, well, the first thing I would say is I don't think that Thomas Sowell is the coon that everybody makes him out to be. I think a lot of the things he say get misinterpreted as, oh, he's against his own people. When really, at the end of the day, I feel like he comes from a age where he saw black people more focused on education, more focused on family, more focused on those things. And what he sees now in comparison to what it was before is deplorable. And it's kind of hard to see that because, as, as you just said, you know, me and you were probably in the same age bracket. You're a Gen Xer, right? Yeah, 1975. Okay, so I was born 78. We can remember when we were children seeing a very different black community. Would you agree to that? Absolutely. So the problem is if you've, if you've seen the black community in its heyday and then you see it degenerate into what it is, it's kind of hard not to have an opinion about that. And when you give that opinion in this day and age, you're, you're immediately going to be labeled something negative for giving that opinion. Well, labeling is really a weak way of uh, trying to make an argument. We have to look at the facts as they are, right? When you're looking at Thomas Sowell, what is his specialty? It's economics. It's economics. Mm -hmm. So how, how all of a sudden did he become a historian? Well, that's, that's the issue. Like, my thing is with Thomas Sowell, there's a lot of things that I agree with him on. Mm -hmm. But as I, I had a debate with Obsidian about this, the one issue I have with Thomas Sowell is when he starts getting into philosophy and things like that, because that's not really his, that's not really his wheelhouse, in my opinion. Right. But the, um, re the reason why he's doing that is because he's a Harvard graduate. Mm -hmm. Okay. He is a part of the, what's that group? The, the, the uh, I know what you're talking about. The, the, I think it starts with an H Institute. I can't remember the name. Hoover, Hoover. Hoover Institute. He's a member of, of the Hoover Institute. So you're talking about one of the smartest men, very intelligent. Yeah. He is doing that because his school of thought is the Booker T. Washington School of Thought. And Booker T. Washington basically promoted at his time what we call cooning and selling out, right? Yeah. But at his time, it was an important method of survival for black folk exactly. for them to do that. You understand? Yeah. At that time. Of, but now, in uh, why are we still doing that Booker T. Washington stuff? Unless you're conceding that white folks are now and forever the power that should be in power. The only that's, way, that's only not, way you would do it. And well, that is why he gets pushed as a historian when he is not. He is not a historian. And he doesn't, he's not respected as a historian. He's respected for his economics. And when he's talking about the economics behind welfare and how it destroyed the black family, that is spot on, 100%. And that's why, like I mentioned before, it's from intelligence to listen to those who you disagree with. So I take it, I take it you don't agree with some of the statements he made in the black rednecks and white liberals. Absolutely not. No way. It's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. Hmm. I don't agree with that. No. It, it, is, it doesn't even make any sense, right? So, but at, at any rate, Brother LV and Sister Angela and Brother Mike and Brother Graypill and Brother Angry, I got to work at 7 a.m. Oh, shit. <laughs> so you're signing off. I am signing off. I, I get a, a pleasure. 
as usual. Yeah. When I get a chance, brother, I would love to chop it up with you about that particular book at some other time. I don't want to take over the stream with that conversation, but yeah, absolutely, it's no problem. My channel's the features. Visit me at any time. It's a small Ricky Dink channel, but yeah, visit me anytime, brother. Yeah, shout out no to the features. Me. If any of the mods can share his channel link in the the chat, that will be very helpful. Shout out to the features. Thank Always so bringing good information to the panel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good night, my friends. You change your features. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump. <laughs> <laughs>